All right, so me. we're on the build, and we, we we're on call. We're still at the demolition stage. We're taking up the floor today, and we'll give a little tour on how it's, uh, we're going to be ripping it up. So right here, we want to save the plywood. The plywood's like a hundred dollars a sheet. And they're just getting two crowbars working together because there's all kinds of these little nails. So don't try and, you know, take it up in one corner. And there they go. Now they're going to put the long part in and start prying up to get the front lifted off. Alright, all right. All right, now they're going to go take it and move along and try the same thing. The trick is really just get a couple of crowbars, get a couple of guys. It's hard to lift up that plywood because there's so many nails all along there and it has a real suction. And, you know, we're fortunate enough, we're going to, the plywood is uh, 1977 because the newspaper was really what gave, was a giveaway. We're going to reuse that plywood. That's kind of cool, I think. Like, it's really a testament to using plywood. Um, you know, I see a lot of the uh, wafer board stuff being used. Um, my opinion, stay away from it. Stick with the good stuff, the plywood, all right? You, you're not saving money by using the cheap stuff. It's a, this is really a testament to how well, uh, well quality plywood lasts, all right? So here we go. One, two, three. Are we going to be able to lift this up or we had enough? No, we're jammed up. Uh, if you see how we're going here, we're wedged in that corner. And it's because the house is a little crooked. The plywood's a little crooked. And when you get wedged, remove everything that's in the way. Like right here is taking all the frames out. Um, you, you try to manhandle it. You won't be able to lift it. And you want to keep the, sh the uh, sheet intact. That's, that's about it. That's the only real advice I could give somebody is be surgical keep your area super clean make sure there's no nails sticking out so somebody trips you know puts her hand out and cuts it open or something like that you know um and you know have lots of bodies you know this is about the most you, you want it's about four right here you can't really do much more than that and here we go one, two, three. No, not this time, eh? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. No. One, two, three. All right, come on. It's going up this time. Nope. Now it's going this time. So you can see it is a hard job. I'm not going to lie here. Like getting those sheets up is not 10 minutes. All right. You know, uh, you, you, we could have cut the plywood out just at the saw, but uh, like I said, we're going to reuse those plywood. Now it's to get off the rest of it here and, you know, move that little supporting beam. You know, I prefer using a hammer, like if you see what they're doing. They're, he's finally went with the hammer. You know, giving a tap. You can see he tried to give a tap with his foot, but it's. I laugh at it because you can't get very much distance. Sometimes you're tired at this point, and picking up that hammer weighs a lot, even a little hammer. So, you know, bring lots of food, lots of snacks, and lots of water. Like, it wasn't too hot here, but 
Um, you know, if we start getting in the middle of the summer, you know, you're going to get dehydrated really fast doing this kind of work. All right. Now, they're finally, after all this, we're getting down to the real wood, the, the original floor of the house. You can see, like, how much they have it jacked up. But the problem with it jacked up like this is you don't know what's underneath. And so, really, this is the real testament. Right now, we're taking those boards off in one full length. It was about 10, a little over 10 feet, those boards. And I was kind of surprised that they were in good shape. I expected more rot under there when we started getting these boards off. You could see they had like a floorboard as the first layer. And when we get down to the second layer, it was like one inch pine. That was the structure that they used. So we're being careful here. Try to get them up without splitting them too much. Once you get a couple off, it's pretty good. But you could see, <clears throat> you know, everybody's like, when they see the floor open, we're all like, okay, what's, what's down there? What's going on? Uh, you know, because um, you really, you're kind of blind at this point. You don't know um, how much dirt or if there's a crawl space or anything under there because we had no access anywhere. They didn't have an access to get in. But at this point, we're committed to putting a new floor in. So there's really no turning around. And just remember, you know, keep keep the material moving. Keep it moving. Get one person, if they have to run in and out of that house, don't let it build up. Because I've seen guys let their piles build up, and then they get tired, and they, they walk over it, and they, get, they slip, and they get a nail in the hand or something like that. All right? And there they go. Almost done. Finally. All right, Kurt. So, what a effing mess. That's all I gotta say. Um, for me, I I expected more rot in the boards. We're definitely on dirt. We we we, we there's no if ands or buts. We couldn't have done it. But it's lasted. I mean, this floor was done 1977 because of newspaper, and it, it's really lasted. But there is a lot of moisture. So, what do you think? How are you feeling? You're a couple of weeks into this now. Yeah, we're two weeks in. We got the whole house demolished, and now we're ripping the floor apart. The floorboards look decent. They're uh, they're not too wet, but they definitely can't stay. And uh, the baby it doesn't look too bad though. We got some pretty cool old boards here, and so a so ton of work, a ton of digging to do. So is that finders keepers for the cabinet maker? Yeah. Well. We'll see. We'll have to negotiate terms. <laughs> we will? To get that wood out. Oh, whoa. I don't know, man. This isn't, this isn't a charity. Oh, it's not a charity. But the thing is, you wouldn't have known about it if I wasn't here. No, no. It's classic woodworker spiel. Okay. This is the woodworker hustle. All right. So what I'm hoping for is I don't, if I can get away with not pouring concrete, I might, but I still need a pad. What I'm hoping for is take out all this dirt. They got the pins over, over here. And we want to have airflow. This is this is the big problem with these old houses. They're right on the dirt. It would have lasted, no problem whatsoever. But I guess, I don't know what it was. It didn't have the, the wood, the structure, or they relied on it. And that's our biggest problem. We've got to make sure there's air moving underneath. Here's the wood pile. Um, I don't have the heart to tell Kurt, but I guess I'm going to have to own up to it. I could take all these boards and turn them into flooring. Yeah, that's a, that's only one quarter of the, of that of that old section there. So he did he did luck out into it. And I think we will be doing it. All right. If he doesn't want it, I need it for my living room. So let's uh, let's see what happens. I wonder what we're going to do here. And the rest of it here is just thrown in. This is really what the dumpster looks like. You try to be careful with the dumpster meaning Try to fill the air holes. Don't have too many air holes or it's, you know, you're going to fill this up pretty fast. 
this we'll need one more dumpster after this and the project should be done it'll be four dumpsters i was a little disappointed they didn't have the really big ones all right and you can see what a beautiful day eh? they do have an amazing view of the water and welcome to canada blue skies i'm not this is it all right to our american friends you wonder why we put up with canada this is why so this is the famous wood pile, and you can see, I won't say it's a mother load, but it's quite a bit of wood. Um, the big thing, like some of this, like it's still pretty damp, and so it's going to take a while to dry it out. But what's hard with this wood are taking these nails out, you know, because you, you want to plane this after. I want this all one thickness. And, but you can see I can almost bend this by hand, eh? I couldn't snap that one. But they're all pretty rusted. They're square nails, you know. And what we forget, about a hundred years ago, these are all forged by hand. Literally, guys with, with a hammer making nails. I don't know, you know, didn't exactly have the machinery. And I can imagine, like, how much, look there, I broke it. How much this would have cost, these nails? You know, people think, Wood was, and every, everything else was cheap. That's not true. This wood, for them to mill that back in the day, I mean, with that little handsaw they had, and they had a log, and some guys are holding it. Oh, God. I, I mean, I couldn't even think of it compared to today's. Today, we can mill this up in, like, no time. So, that, that's why a lot of the houses back then were all small with people. We, we got this romantic notion about big houses. Lumber. What I love about it is the real deal. And I'm gonna say this out loud. I see that fake crap that goes out there and it's like looking at a Rembrandt and a fake Rembrandt, you know, the picture of the dogs with cars, cards, you know? The real deal, you can't beat it. So he really lucked out. I don't know what's gonna become of it. I know it's not his style for the flooring, you know? Or does this become my bonus? I don't know. We'll find out, but it's not, at the end of the day, it's, it's, I took it out to save, save it on the dumpster, but also I took it because this is gorgeous wood, and at the end of the day, it's really his wood.